Is your reputation really that good, or do you just want it to be? Hello Splash Universe, I'm Derek Haney and thanks for joining me for episode 9 of Splash U Small Business Tips. Today I want to discuss your online reputation and how to on, uh, align that with your live reputation and what it really means to uh, have a reputation and, and manage your reputation in general. Uh, first off, we all know what it feels like when you go through the process with a customer of helping them out. Uh, building them a kitchen or fixing uh, their sink or drain or bathroom, whatever industry you might be in, there's a process that you work with the customer on that uh, you solve their problem and they pay you for it. And it feels, you know, from your side of things, it might feel like you've done your job. But in order to really ensure that you are getting, uh, giving that five-star service uh, in order to get that five-star Yelp review, you have to ask yourself a few questions. The first one is, is how did I engage them at every touch point along the way? Was I friendly to them from the first email? Did I respond promptly to their contact uh, when they, when they uh, asked for more information? Was I uh, prompt on showing up on time? Did I solve the complete problem or did I rush out of there? Did it take me longer than expected? Did I manage their expectations properly? Did they, did they feel like they got the best possible experience in the proper amount of time uh, for the right amount of money? And when you start to break that down a lot, you can see holes in your own strategy where you may have been late on sending off an email or you didn't get it back to somebody in a couple of days or you had to go back and fix a job for somebody, and those are those are things that happen, but those are things that you need to uh, expect and anticipate for in your business, and so managing the expectation of that is sometimes what it comes down to when you are, when you're trying to get a good review, especially online. Uh, on that note, there is, it's really uh, interesting study has kind of uh, come to light for me where when a person has a negative experience, but then the business is able to turn that around into a positive experience, that's when they actually become the most engaged and some, uh, and are the more likely to leave you not just a, a, a better scored Yelp review uh, or online review, but also they are very likely to refer you because you solved this problem for them after that problem occurred, whether it was your fault or somebody else's fault or anything like that. So it, interestingly enough, having a small problem and fixing it is a little bit better than a very smooth process throughout. Uh, I guess people like the highs and lows of life and it, uh, it's just the way that it is. Maybe if you are completely flawless uh, in your service, you could consider throwing that uh, little kink in the line, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just uh, be as good as possible at any given time. And on that note, you have to expect um, your customer or potential customer can review you at any touch point across your business. So that, that includes from uh, pestering them with online ads. That could get a Yelp review. Uh, and, you know, it's okay to give online ads, but I've gotten reviews where someone said, I'm tired of seeing their company in my Facebook feed and they have nothing, uh, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with this business. It's so annoying. And, uh, you know, you just respond, hey, you can actually turn off this ad by hitting hide this ad on your feed and then we'll never bother you again. I'm so sorry that we were uh, intruding on your life, uh, intrud intruding in a way that you didn't want us to. That, you know, was never our intention. So uh, there are ways to solve problems like that. Uh, and then there's other problems that could exist are phone calls if you're cold calling or calling a customer after the job is completed and, and trying to get surveys or other information. There's ways to um, upset people that you might not expect. It doesn't have to be about the product or service that you're offering directly. Anytime you interact with a customer or they have an interaction on your website, or with your with an email that you sent them, they have the opportunity to review you and leave negative a negative review about you. And so it's very important that you make all of those touch points very fluid, and you also offer opportunities for them to come to you first before posting online about their negative experiences. That way, you can turn the experience around before everybody else in the world has to hear about it. So what I like to say on that 
front is you need to treat every person as if they're your next five star review or your next one star review. And when you start approaching uh, customer interaction and customer service in that way, you realize that you really have to do a little bit more than you did yesterday on, uh, on pleasing somebody. We are in a customer service world um, and I already talked at length about how that is one of the industries we're in. So it's really important to uh, keep in mind how you can uh, how you can improve somebody's day in an unexpected way, change their life, and that has nothing to do with your business per se, and and then get uh, a great review from them. On that note, you should definitely be in follow-up email sequences and stuff. You should be asking if people are happy with your service. The uh, if, the shorthand of doing this is just asking them to review you and then finding out. The better way to do it is asking them if they're happy and then if they say yes by answering a one-question survey or something like that, then sending them a follow-up email that says, can you please review us? And if they say no, you say, hey, what, what happened? What was wrong? And how can I you know, help improve your experience with us? That way you can learn where you went wrong or where your business can improve on touching somebody, uh, the next customer, or fixing this uh, current customer's problem. A company that I work with uh, on a regular basis, they have a reputation problem and they, you know, they came to us and said, we have a great product, we have great service, but we have a terrible online reputation. They had never managed it before. So what we did was we reached out to a lot of past customers and asked for reviews. We sent uh, cards in the mail, we sent emails, and we said, can you please review us? And this was a way to activate hidden reviews from our customers. We didn't ask you know, for money or anything. We just said, hey, if you had a good experience with us, you, know, uh, you can share that online. Just give us a, a minute of your time and, and tell us what you thought using Yelp. And so by doing that, we, we were able to activate kind of uh, these hidden, hidden reviewers online. And that's definitely the way to go. Never buy online reviews. Uh, negative for other people or positive for yourself, that is uh, it's just wrong, it's bad for business, and it will often lead to just being a complete waste of money because they'll get caught and they'll get taken down. Um, people, you know, what goes around comes around. People will do this to you if you do it to somebody else. And if you're just posting a bunch of fake positive reviews on your site, it's really likely that um, there, there's not going to be as much substance there and they're, they're just going to end up be, uh, disappearing through some sort of filter uh, or something like that. So don't do that. It is important as a small business owner to understand how the Yelp review system works. So let me break that down for you really fast. They have an algorithm that decides whether a review is credible or not. Usually that credibility is based on, uh, well, it's, it's, it's always based on a few things. Uh, think we don't know everything for sure, but these are the generally accepted uh, ways that, it's, it, uh, that Yelp reviews are, are monitored and dis determined whether to be included or excluded. So if someone's written a review, if it's a five-star review, it has a slightly less chance of being shown than a one-star review. And then the stuff in between are uh, a little bit different, a uh, little bit less, uh, more chance of being reviewed. I think five-star is probably the least chance of being reviewed. The important things, though, when someone's reviewing you on Yelp is that they have friends and that they've made other reviews from, un from industries hopefully outside of yours. I'd assume that's a factor. But mainly if somebody has five friends and has, made, and, and has posted three reviews on other products, then you can be fairly certain that this review will stick on your page. Yelp has verified that this is a real user and uh, they don't think it's a fake, so it'll probably stick on your page. Uh, the more friends and the more reviews they've made, the more likely it's to be, uh, be on your page. So that, that's really important because I've heard a lot of, of business owners come to me and say, you know, especially business owners that deal with older clientele, uh, they say, you know, I've got five five-star reviews that are hidden from Yelp. Yelp is, you know, screwing me and this is costing me money in real business. And it's true, like uh, Yelp is technically uh, hiding quality reviews uh, there. They're not personally necessarily going after you and I, you should certainly not ever advocate that Yelp is the bad guy here. Uh, to especially to your customers because Yelp is trusted by most of your customers. So telling them that the trusted source isn't trusted and you are is, is kind of a tough sell in that sense. But you, you need to find ways to take these uh, customers whose reviews have been hidden and send them an email or a message and say, hey, I noticed that your review got hidden. Maybe, uh, you know, verifying a few friends, connecting your Facebook page, 
uh, making a couple additional reviews, uh, you know, just uh, something like that would help your review get shown. You don't have to do it for us, but um, I just want to let you know it would mean a lot and see what see what happens if someone you know has the free time or or just it might remind them to review some other product or service that they've been thinking about. So you you gain that kind of action from them, and then you can get those reviews, uh, positive reviews posted. Now, in, uh, to move on to something a little bit different, how to respond to reviews. Uh, with positive reviews, you shouldn't be too overbearing and thank people for the review. Generally, the best thing to do is message them with a response saying, thank you very much, I got, uh, we, we, we were so happy to do business with you. With, um, and then the best thing to do is to take some uh, quote from their review and put that onto the social channels, promoting your Yelp page uh, or putting it on a testimonial, uh, maybe not a testimonial page, but testimonials on your site. The testimonial page is dead. We'll save that topic for another day. Uh, and if, if, they, if they've made a negative review, then you should certainly try and take the conversation offline and see if you can resolve the issue. And if you can't, if it's too late, then you just kind of have to let it be. If, it is, uh, if there is something you can do, you know, it, you need to work within your business organization to guarantee that we can turn that around for them. And once you've accomplished that, ask them if they can change their rating. Say, hey, we're, we, we don't expect a five-star rating, but if, we, if you rated us one star and we helped you a lot, you know, solving an issue, can you give us four stars? You know, can you, can you move your rating up or even just take the review down, um, you know, one or the other? are totally fine, or you can ask them to do a follow-up, uh, either a follow-up post on the review or a follow-up review. So th those are the main tips that I have for online reputation management. You have to check a lot of different channels, uh, including, you know, the three big ones are Google+, Facebook, and Yelp. And there are a bunch of other ones. You can review people on Foursquare. A lot of the uh, subsequent local listings have their own review uh, platforms. Yahoo has reviews. So there's a lot of different places you could be reviewed and not even know it. Uh, a great company that we use with our clients is called ReviewTrackers.com, and they help take all of your reviews online, put them in one central place so you can monitor them and respond to them when they come in. Um, they charge, I think, $33 a month for that service, but it's totally worth it if you're a little bit overwhelmed with reviews coming in and managing them. and. Uh, and, and you can just kind of make that a really fast play uh, for your business and kind of streamline the process. That's it from me, Derek Haney. Thank you for joining us for another Splash You Small Business Tips, and I'll see you guys next time.